In this video, we're going to learn how to export the control frame of a form body to use in Blender. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video we're going to take this Ford Bronco body that I started, and we're going to export the control frame into Blender. Now, there are a couple things here that we need to cover. So this first minute or so, I'm just gonna talk about why we're doing this and then we'll get into how we're going to do it. So first, I wanted to model this because I love Broncos. I've had a few of them, I've had a few trucks, I've got an F-150 right now. And I wanted one of these Broncos, but I was like number 50 on the waiting list and I just wasn't able to find the one that I wanted. So I wanted to model one and I wanted to play around with the fender flares and just see if I could customize it. Now, recently Ford released the Bronco Raptor, and unfortunately the ugliest thing about these things is the fender flares. Now the Raptor made the fender flares from the Sasquatch edition, the wider ones, even worse, and it looks just horrible. So I started playing around, trying to model it in forms, and I wanted to just come up with an idea. So that's where the original video came from. I just started to play around with flaring the fenders out. And I'm not gonna say that I'm happy with this result, but it was just kind of an experiment I was doing. But along that, I started to model the body. Now we're gonna get into why we would want to do what we're going to learn to do. Well, so when I was modeling the truck, the majority of the body is fairly straightforward, fairly easy to do. The sides, the fenders, the rollover to the hood, that stuff is pretty straightforward with forms. Where it starts to get complicated is when we get into the hood. Now the hood has a bulge in it. Now these trucks either come with a turbo four cylinder or a V6. Now the bulge on the hood is a little tricky because it doesn't follow the standard four sided patch layout that we, we make sure that we want to follow that when we're working on forms. So what happened was I subdivided it and I used the exact method. And the way that this worked is it started to split up all kinds of other areas. So if we look at the base of the windscreen, you can see that it added a bunch of different divisions in here. And I'll go down to a box display. And again, in the upper corner of the windscreen, and we just have all these divisions that just really aren't needed. And we end up with a lot of T points, we have star points, and it just makes for a really messy model and it's hard to control. So for all the benefits of Fusion 360 and playing around with forms, when we start to get into more complex shapes, especially when we start to end up with these T points and star points, that's really where we start to, to hit the limitation. We really start to run up against a wall. So what I wanna talk about is taking an earlier version of this. So one where we didn't have all those divisions, this is nowhere near complete, but I just wanted to use this as an example. So we're gonna take this version and we're going to export it as an OBJ and bring it into Blender. So when we talk about doing this in Fusion 360, the forms are a subdivided body. It's very similar to the poly modeling approach that you have in Blender, that you have in Maya and 3D Studio and so on. The difference is what we're really doing is we're controlling a smooth form by building a control cage. Now you can see here that the windows turn into this like yellow submarine looking thing as soon as I show the smooth display. Box display, it looks great, but smooth display, it doesn't. And it simply doesn't based on the fact that it doesn't have the level of control. And that's why I said the fenders, the doors, all that stuff is relatively easy. As soon as we start to try to change direction, that's when things start to get ugly. But there's a benefit to, to using forms here and the fact that we can go to the body we can right click on it and we can use the option to save control frame as an OBJ. There's also this IGA format. So if you're actually using uh, T-splines, you can bring in T-spline bodies and you can export them. It's very similar. But what we're doing is we're going to save the control frame as an OBJ. Now the control frame is what we see here in box display. So it's not gonna take into account the smooth display. All it's going to do is spit out exactly what we have here, all the quads, all the tries, all the polys, and it's gonna give us something that we can use in Blender. So I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna go ahead and call this Bronco Export. I'm just gonna say OBJ in the title. Then I'm gonna move over into Blender. So in Blender, we have the default scene. I'm gonna hit A and X to delete everything. Then I'm gonna to go to my file, import, and I wanna import an OBJ. 
Now, when we do this, I need to look for the location. So in this case, it never seems to go back to the location, uh, but, in the, but I, I've used it recently so I can just find it in the recent section. So we're gonna go to the Bronco Export OBJ. Notice that we've got some options for geometry. We've got Y up. I actually wanna change this to Z up and X forward, and I'm gonna import. Now, when I do this, it's gonna think and it's gonna bring it in. We gotta zoom out a bit. And you can see here, now we have this boxy Bronco body. Now, the benefit of this, again, is that what we did was we took that control frame, that boxy cage, which is exactly how you would model something like this in Blender, and we simply exported it. So when we're taking a look at this in Blender, now we can go to our modifiers, we can add a subdivision surface, let me take this up to three, and we can also right click and shade smooth. Now you'll notice that when we do this, we still have these rounded windows to, uh, to deal with, and that's something that we can sort of manipulate and modify by adding additional controls. So when we do this in Blender, what we can do is use Control R to insert an edge loop, and I can just add these edge loops, which doesn't really present the same level or same problem that we get when we're doing this in Fusion 360. And we have an on-screen view of what we're changing that looks pretty good. I'm gonna do it back here as well. So the insert, loop, cut, and slide. I'm gonna go ahead and put one back here and we'll just finish off the back corner. I'm not gonna go through the process of modeling this thing, but um, it's relatively easy to, to set up in Fusion 360, and then we can manipulate it over here. Another thing that we can do is we can mirror it in here. So I'm gonna turn on X-Ray, and I wanna take away everything that is on that side. So it gets a little tricky, but let's go ahead and try to select everything and we're gonna hit X and we're gonna delete faces. So that leaves me with half. And then I can go into my modifier stack and I can add a mirror modifier. And when we add a mirror modifier, in this case, we're going across Y, uh, we can turn on clipping and we can turn on bisect and flip depending on what options you need. Now you will notice if we zoom into this and I've covered this in a previous video that the intersection doesn't look quite right. And that's because the subdivision surface happened before the mirror. We just need to make sure that we move it. And also we can toggle on the mirror. If we wanna see both sides, we can turn that on. But again, this gives me a smooth result. This gives me something that I can uh, play around with. So we go and go into our render. I don't have a light, so I'm gonna just do control uh, shift A and I'm gonna add a sun just to give me a little bit of light in the scene. And you can see that it comes in relatively smooth, relatively nice. Now, this is by no means uh, an ideal workflow. Obviously, you don't really wanna start modeling something in one software and then move over to the other. But the reason that I'm mentioning this is because it's oftentimes very easy to get started in Fusion, and there might be some good reasons why you want to get started in Fusion. And just continue to model in the box modeling approach. Then when you take it over to something like Blender, if you're gonna take it to Blender for rendering, you can do some of those finishing touches and final renders over there. Now this does only work for the forms bodies. You can only convert the forms control frame into that OBJ. We could also export the entire thing as a mesh after it gets converted. But again, it gets a little trickier. It doesn't really have quite the same results. When we export the control frame, and we bring it over to Blender, it gives us something nice that we can manipulate. We now have vertices that we can select, we've got edges, and we've got our faces. And we can just continue to model as if we started this in Blender. So hopefully that helps. I know that on this channel I've covered taking stuff from Fusion to Blender and taking stuff from Blender back to Fusion a dozen different times and in different ways but I really do think that there is a lot of power in understanding these options because oftentimes in Fusion, you get to a point where you're, you're just kind of stuck. Now, forms are not easy by any means, they're very difficult, and it can be nice to have a backup or a safety net we can take it into Blender. Now, Blender is a little bit more difficult to get used to, to start modeling. There are some benefits to doing it in Fusion, but ultimately what we have here is our, our quad control frame Hopefully all of them are quads, but obviously there aren't. We've got some of these T-points here, but then we can continue to refine it here in Blender if needed. 
So at this point, if you have any questions, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.